African Justice Media is a media platform that is based in Uganda. Apparently, we operate in Mukono, that's the physical location. And our vision is to bring ideas on board that can impact Africa, that can lead to the prosperity of Africa. So we host different programs. We have debates, we have ideas, challenges, we have book challenges. We have, um, we discuss economics, we discuss social issues, we discuss health issues. So we come up with different programs that can impact the society positively. And in today's discussion, we are going to talk about this health in times of crisis. And we have an expert here. Dr. Sulaiman Mubilu is a medical student. <laughs> so he's going to be taking us through the topic, as you can see. So that is today's topic. It's teeth health care in times of the COVID-19 crisis. And my name is George Justice, and I'm the founder of the African Justice Media. And we have our guest today is Mobilu Sulaiman, the CEO of the African Smilers Association. And he is also a medical student. So I have been following him on Facebook and I see the work he does is actually good work towards um, the health of the teeth health in our communities. You've organized different health camps that have really impacted lives. So to start with, I would like you to introduce yourself to our audience. Mr. Sliman Mubilu. The floor is yours, sir. You're welcome to the Social Impact Show on the African Justice Media. You can take it up. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, like he said, I'm Mugru Sulaiman, CEO of African Smilers Association. I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm ready to take you through what we've been doing, what we look forward to doing. I hope we share some great time. Thank you, George, for hosting me and my friends who are watching. All right. Thank you once again. That was fantastic introduction. So um, tell us about the African Smiles Association briefly before we dive into the issues of, you know, teeth health. Uh, well, for African Smilers Association, it's mainly a non-profit dental association that I started up with my other four friends. Um, in the past years, we've been having dental camps, but we are, we are people who are just called as a group to help other, other organizations like we worked with some organization from USA called A Reason to Smile. We worked with Chera in Mountain Resort. We worked with uh, with Build Your Smile from Canada. Uh, so time came and we realized maybe we may also need an organization that is home based that will be able to receive this kind these kind of groups to come and volunteer in Africa. Um, another thing, African Smile Association is currently operating in Uganda, but we only look forward to extending our help in other parts of Africa in the long run. Uh, we've been providing services like oral education, which is key, uh, because we realized almost 60% of the population in Uganda don't know how to brush their teeth. We've been offering extractions, cleaning. Sure. <laughs> okay, routine. Um, and we've been offering uh, some dentures. Dentures are artificial teeth. People who have been having missing teeth. Uh, and many other oral, 
all health services that we've been providing, but mainly we have been providing these services at a free cost to those people who are in underserved communities. For example, the ghettos, people in islands like Zinga Island, we visited Zinga Island so far, we visited Kimi Island with the American team in Asese. So those people who have no access to dental health care. Wow, wow, wow. That's great work of you, Sulaiman. What you're doing is, is, is so good to the community. Okay. So uh, I was, uh, the participants here are actually recording some questions for you, because since you are an expert in that field, um, a solution for asking questions. So let's go straight to what do you think, as an expert in the very field, what do you think is uh, the root cause of tooth decay because we've realized in Africa most of the uh, people you don't you can't even reach 20 years without having removed about five kinds of you know your tooth so what do you think is the problem well uh, I may say I'm not an expert like you said because I've been in this for a few years but I can answer that uh, the first problem is people don't know how to brush their teeth, like I said earlier. You may find someone telling you, but doctor, I brush my teeth every day, but I don't know why I keep on getting curious. Some people don't know how to brush, only that if I had my model here, I would show you how to brush, how people are supposed to brush their teeth, but it's one of our objectives. That's why it's one of our objectives, oral, oral health education is one of our objectives in that when you reach in the field, we have to teach people how they have to do it correctly. Another thing, um, people think you only need to visit a dentist when you have pain. And that is also a challenge because you have to visit a dentist to always check on your teeth. Sometimes your teeth might be susceptible to these problems just because maybe they are malaligned. So it's easy for them to get these decays. Huh? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't move with the, mo with the model. I wanted to show you how to brush your teeth correctly because it's wow. very key. It's that very key. Great this. If we, we had it, but maybe next time better. So. What do you think people should do? Yeah, you said you But didn't... actually, mm. people, people could follow in from our page, African Smilers Association, because we always post these videos when we are demonstrating and teaching them how to brush. And I give that credit to Dr. Nkulumbi Baker, who is our current president. Mm. He, we recently posted a video some two, three weeks back. It will be helpful. All right. So uh, since you've talked about some of the causes, if people don't know how to really brush well, do you mean even mature people don't know how to brush well? Definitely. There so, are even mature people who don't know how to brush correctly because we have to brush at least twice a day. Uh, you have to floss because brushing only can't, can't keep can't remove food from the spaces between your teeth. You have to floss. If only you know how to floss. <laughs> how is yeah. that? So um, there is even also the prescription of uh, the toothpaste that they use. And, and some people actually say that there are some kind of toothpaste that lack a certain nutrient. Do you think all toothpaste uh, can work for toothbrush or for brushing the teeth? Or we have to choose some kind, some specific toothpaste to use because you find that some people use herbal, others say that this does not work, this type does not work. So what, what do you say about the kinds of toothpaste that we use? And do you have recommendations for some of them? Well, I may say if someone has any issue with toothpaste, they really need to get a uh, they really need to get, okay, they need to see their dentist and they recommend because 
we live in different areas. For example, I'll give you an example. There is Kasese, and there's some area around Fort Porto called uh, Chibito. Their water has a lot of fluoride. So these people, most of the times, we may advise them to get a toothpaste, the, the type of toothpaste that doesn't have a lot of fluoride in it because the water itself already has fluoride. So sometimes it may vary according to the area where you stay. And the good thing, these products have indications on them. So it's only the dentist who can tell you that this might suit you or not. Okay, so uh, does it mean that when you want to buy, as, an, as a person, when you want to buy toothpaste, you need to first consult from the doctor, but which one should I use? Yes, it would be it would be better. It would be better to first consult from a to get consultation from a dentist. Is it getting consultation? You may forgive my English, but it's okay. Right to the right come. <laughs> okay, so Slyman Vilu. How can someone join the Africa Smiles Association? Is it as you said it's a non-profit organization? Is it for everyone? Like, how do you volunteer? And can any, any other person join your organization, even if they are known? Because I think it's, a, it's an organization of dentists only, or anyone can join. Uh, well, uh, when I was giving a brief description of our organization, I didn't mention this. Uh, we are, first of all, we a team of dental students and young dentists who extend this kind of work to the underserved, but we welcome people who are non-dentists. They also have a lot of work to do here because it is simple to teach someone how to brush teeth. So as we teach these people, they may help us as we go into these camps. They may also do that work. We have a lot of work for those people to do, people who are in sterilization, People will pass in arranging lines, as you know, people have a lot of dental problems. We face big numbers while in the field. So everyone has work to do in our organization. So we welcome all the kinds of people, whoever is willing to help the We allow, they can apply to us and we see which positions we can give them. Uh, on the other hand, we are looking forward to orchestrating this thing with a uh, tourism in a way that maybe we had a thought that it might bring in more other people who would want to volunteer as you we orchestrate it with tourism as we go to have dental camps maybe we may do a camp for two days then two days off to the game park or in a tourism destination so in this maybe if we say we are to have a camp and we are going to pay fifty dollars we may organize something that we see ASA is going to get at least uh, 10,000 Uganda shillings from each volunteer who comes from that money that we are going to use for tourism. ASA, ASA may be getting some 10K from it. That will help us get things we need to use in the field like the medicine and all that that you've been seeing, gas costing, like even transport, the facilitation. Fantastic. So I want I wanted you to focus on the point of how people can manage their teeth health. So how can someone really overcome the problem, the dental problems? The dental problems, first of all, people need to brush twice a day. Yes. That's key. They have to brush using teeth, toothpaste they have to use proper toothbrushes. Some, you may find someone has used the toothbrush for some good years and, uh, yeah. and uh, the hair is already passing backwards and the person is still using it. Mm. Uh, then people need to brush gently. Someone misses a week minus brushing, the moment he gets the brush, he's like, <laughs> they brush the, the gum off. So 
those are one of the key areas, at least twice a day. Brush gently, don't hurt your gums, as they may follow in more from the page. We have a video there. Okay, so you're talking about um, you have to use a toothbrush and toothpaste, but I'm looking at the traditional African society. They used mm. to have um, the, the toothpaste. They used not to have the brush, the, 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 the brush to use. So can't that still happen? And they never had such challenges of tooth decay. What do you think we could do besides people who do not have, uh, there are people who cannot even afford the toothpaste? And, and, and well, yes, I would say, I would say they did have dental problems, only that they were minimal, ah. just because these people didn't have, didn't have these things like we have like now candy, chocolates, these are the people boosting these, the biscuits. So these people used to, to use, to be using more of organic stuff like, mm, okay, I would say they weren't eating as sweet things as we do. Okay, so Phillips is asking how many minutes should he take while brushing? At least two minutes. You take two so minutes. That means, yeah, that means two minutes and above. <laughs> but I think most people don't even take second, 30 seconds. <laughs> so, See, uh, that's... about the issue of uh, you know, you take up medical camps to the communities to help them with the tooth uh, problem, but how do you decide on which place to go? Can you go to any place or can anyone invite you? Maybe it's a medical school, maybe it's a university, maybe a community. Can anyone invite you to their places? Or what, what do you use to determine where to go? Um, most of the times, uh, only we are not an old organization because we are about to just make two years. But for now, we've been getting areas where we have people we know. Just like, for example, I can give you a team member knows somewhere in Mukono. He tells us, I have my people here, we go. But you also welcome people who invite us. Only that the only challenge you've been facing, someone is in Arua. It tells you you come, you have dental problems, but then our association can't afford going to Arua. First of all, it's for accommodations and everything. So we have been operating from places not very far from home, such that when we work, we are able to return in the same day or after two days, because sometimes the costs tend to be much on us. Yet we don't have any funding. It's been us that have been contributing even the dental students who have been wanting to maybe to get some skills from the field. So these people come along and contribute something. They come, get the skill. So sometimes we use that money to facilitate, give people lunch, accommodation, and transport. Oh, oh that's great. So if there are members who have questions on board, I call upon you to bring up those questions before we end the session. We are remaining with just a few minutes. This is this was an hour discussion, and you know we delayed a little bit, but we want to keep it brief and informative. So if there is anyone who has a question, you can raise up your hand and you ask that question. So Tumushave is asking Tumushave Samuel Katagada is asking which type of toothpaste do you recommend? Um, Samuel, uh, if I'm to recommend a, a brand of toothpaste here, it would be something like an advertisement, which I wouldn't want to pass on air. But I would say most of the toothpaste on market are good. Only that if you are in these few areas, because in Uganda we have realized 
the some two three districts like uh Kasese, Kisolo, okay, mountainous areas. In mountainous areas, if you're to use this kind of toothpaste we have here, you have to, I would say you have to, after brushing, you need to cleanse your teeth so well, such that you don't, because this toothpaste contains a lot of fluoride, so you don't need to have a lot of fluoride accumulating in your teeth because already this water there has a lot of fluoride. So it would be better if you're in these areas to need a to, to meet a dentist who would recommend you the right toothpaste to use. Otherwise, to be sincere for now, I don't know the percentages on toothpastes uh, unless I've uh, given some time to check which one has the least content of fluoride. That's when I can recommend. Mm. Yeah. So when you are at the clinic, how much do you charge that service? You want to tell us about that? Then you also tell us other services that you do offer as Africa Smilers Association. Two questions. Uh, say it again. OK. How much do you charge that at the clinic, the services that you offer, if you are to charge? Because you say you offer them for free, right? Yes. So if it's supposed to be like at the clinic, how much would that be? How much would you charge? Well, if it's extraction at the clinic, per tooth goes for between 40,000 to 50,000. Uh, if it's a filling, it depends if it's a front teeth or tooth or, or these molars and premolars, because we consider them as the posteriors. For, so for these ones at the back, they charge between 60 and 100 per tooth. The front ones, they charge between 80 and 120 per tooth. So it depends on the clinic. Uh, we most of the times give dentures. Dentures are these artificial removable teeth. Uh, each denture, each tooth, as a danger from clinics, they range between 150 and 250. So it depends which clinic, but at least I've given you a gauge how they judge. So that is some good money. And, uh, you know, in, in the current situation, as the COVID-19 has hit the many people, their pockets are not okay. The economic system is not okay. It's, I think most people cannot really afford that. So for you, when you give, at a, 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 give it at a free cost, how do you benefit? And are you going to be doing such kind of work? Who funds you? How do you benefit? Can't you do it like a social enterprise? Like how do you afford to offer it at a free cost? Well, just like I say, do we earn any profit? So we've been providing these services at free cost, but the only way that we've been getting back, now just like me, I'm a dental student and I have seniors like Baker who are our team leaders. So as I put in my small money that I have, I gain a skill. So next time it will encourage me to put in more money and it's this money that helps the organization to push. Um, maybe to add on more, uh, in the first two camps we had as an, individ an individual association, we had to charge people 5K, 5K Ugandan shillings per procedure done. And this, is, this was not paying for the service or, because it's not worth it, but it was to get this money that will help people facilitate things like transport mostly and that. But I would say our team has been providing this as maybe we wait for, we don't know what future has for us. Maybe in the near future, we may get people funding this and we really invite them. Fantastic. So we have seen, this is the topic that is uh, related to COVID-19, the crisis and you know, teeth health. So during the COVID-19 crisis, we've had uh, this, the, the current in the lockdowns. 
we've been outside or move, we've not been allowed to move because of the presidential guidelines, presidential directives. So how have you been doing in that sector of helping out people? Because we understand for health, health still moves on. If for us as people don't move, of course, health issues, will, health, health problems will also still be incurring. So what have you done in respect to that? Have, are you trying to bring um, a technological based strategy or solution? Or have you learned from the COVID-19 crisis maybe to offer tele, telemedicine, telehealth, such issues? How have you managed in the period of uh, the crisis and the lockdown? Well, sometimes we can only do so much. So they locked us and we can't move as you know, most of our team members are dental students. They only allow, allowed medical workers to move. So we could only be advising people through our page because we only have a page, we don't have a website yet. So people have been checking for updates. Sometimes we have classes uh, like we make lives, we teach them how to do things. Some people actually follow in through my personal Facebook profile because I remember some one month back I posted something like it's a hub because actually my granny is a herbalist. So he had given me some hub maybe that can help people relieve, relieve, relieve them of pain in the tooth. You just squeeze it to get the juice. When I tried to make research about it, yes, it was a painkiller. So we could only do so much. That's the only thing we could do. We give them our education through our page as they can wait. Okay, so I thought that maybe there could be um, an online assistance to many people. Maybe you create like a WhatsApp group. Maybe you have, maybe on your page, you start marketing that if you have a, the tooth problem just info, just come and we advise you just as I'm in a certain group that is for health professionals. If you have any health problem, you consult and they tell you about that. So um, yes, you talked about the services, but is uh, dental care the only services that you, the only service that you offer as ASA? Yes, we only concentrate on oral issues by I mean dental issues. All right, that brings us to the end of the discussion that was so so engaging quite and I really learned a lot. Let me hope even the participants today learned a lot of a lot of ideas from this and how basically you can go back and manage your your health um, in relation to tooth decay. So Slyman, I'm giving you five minutes to, to give your recommendations and also as a last word to the participants, to the viewers, to Ugandans, to Africa, because this is something that is going to be uploaded on our YouTube channel and everyone is going to be watching. What crucial information or message would you want someone out there to hear or to understand? Okay, thank you so much, George. Uh, first of all, there's a question I saw Philips asking. Uh, well, maybe Philips wanted wanted people. Okay, he was asking for other people, if I may say. Uh, can I have uh, a role to play in the camp? Let me let me first see this. You know the question. You mean as a as a laboratory technician? Okay. That one, can I have yes. a role to pray in your camp? Yes. Well, Philips is, a, Philips is a lab technician and he's been playing roles in our camps. So like he's asking for others, I think. Uh, uh, there's, there's a scenario where we had a dental student as he was injecting, he, he after injecting the patient, he injected himself also, like, okay, accidentally pricked himself. So there, most of us, I would say we, we are taught other topics, but at least if you have an expert in that region, so Philips is the lab technician, he had to take blood samples of the patient, test them to see if this patient is free, doesn't have like, 
the viruses like HIV and all that, you can see he played the role. He played the role in the field and we managed at least to get over it because the person was panicking, was like, I break myself, I don't know his status. So how am I going, what am I going to do? Am I going to start taking preps? Ah. Okay, things like that. I won't go that far, but just like I said, everyone has a part to play in ASA as long as, okay, they have a part to play. Uh, well, uh, I would, if I'm to recommend someone to a dental clinic, I wanted to recommend my good friend, Baker. I know he's watching, Kurumbi Baker uh, from Beck Smile Dental Clinic. It's located at Old Mulago, near Old Mulago Beach. Uh, am I allowed to drop in his contact? It's okay. You can also you can also drop uh, the chat in the chat in the chat box. You can drop it there for those interested. Okay. And also um, you can paste the link of your organization in the chat box if you can. Okay. So Baker, you can help me post your number in the comment box. As I also read it, it's 0703 893291. 0703 893291. Baker will provide you all the dental services you need. As for me right now, I'm a dental student and he's my senior. He's been taking me through all that. Yeah. So, in, so all of, he also offers free of charge, just like AFCA. Well, at his clinic, no, because as you know, there is a lot of management, there are managers, there are water, what? It's very hard to let in someone that let this one come and I treat him for free. But maybe at personal level, you never know. Mm. When you talk to him, and maybe he can do something for you. But for me, I can't promise that he will do things for free from the clinic. Okay, do you have, still have any other recommendation? Another recommendation? Don't really, maybe those who want to volunteer, you're free to DM us through our page. Those who want to give us anything like any funding that someone might come out and be like, for me, I will find the gloves field and someone provide that, provides us with gloves, face masks, as you know, now we need to, much of PPE is to follow the SOPs, like anything that they can provide, our, our hands are open because we can't provide anything for ourselves. Sometimes we can only do so much. Okay, thank you so much uh, for honoring our invitation. We are really grateful on behalf of the African Justice Media and we wish we shall keep having you. such discussions that really help us as Africa, because our target is to reach out to the whole Africa and see how basically can we use knowledge of our very videos. Because as African justice media, we've realized that there are people like you, there are people who have ideas, but they are not given platform to talk about what they do. And, and, and as Professor Mumba once said that people with ideas have no power and those who have no ideas are in power. So what we do is to get down to everyone and who have people who have ideas, Africans, young Africans, young people, because we believe young people should be at the forefront of any society, especially in Africa, in Uganda, because Uganda is one of the countries that has the highest rate of young people. And I believe let's use our energy. We have the energy, we have the knowledge, we have the ideas, we have the education. So we have the ability to change Africa as young people. All right, guys, thank you so much for attending this. And we can just say bye. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank bye, you. Bye, everyone. Thank you for hosting us. Bye.